month is May, so this month today I'm going to be doing another Shakespeare reading. This one is going to be from Hamlet and I'm going to read two sections. One is the To Be or Not To Be Soliloquy and the second is the O.S. Poor Your Soliloquy. So I'm going to start. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep no more, and by sleep to say the end, the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is the air of truth. To the consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep, to sleep per chance to dream, ay, there's the love. For in that sleep of death what dreams may come, when we have shuffled off all this moral coil, must give us pause, there's the respect that makes calamity so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong. The proud man's contumely. Contumely. The pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurn, that patient merit of the unworthy take, when he himself might this disquietus make, with a bare bodkin. Who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life? But that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no travels returns, puzzles the will, and makes us rather bear the ill, those ills we have, than slight others that we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all, and thus the native view of resolution is sickly o'er with the pale cast of thought, and enterprises of great pitch and moment, with disregard their currents turn awry. And lose the name of action, soft you now, the fair Ophelia nymph, and thy orisons beyond my sins remember. And then I'm going to do um, the second soliloquy at the end, the last poor York one, after spoiler alert, um, Horatio died. <laughs> and I know in this scene, you're still, the person who's Hamlet is supposed to be holding the skull, so we have an imaginary skull. <laughs> Alas, poor York, I knew him. Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy, he hath borne me on the back of a thousand times, and how abhorred in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed, I know not oft. Where be your guides now, your gambols, your songs, your flashes of merriment? And there won't be, that there won't to set, that there won't to set the table on a war. Not one now to mock your own grain, quite chapfallen. So, now get you to my lady's chamber, and tell her let her paint an inch thick to this favor she must come. Make her laugh at that. Pretty Horatio, tell me one thing. 